mouth and the meditation of my heart. Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength, and Lord, you are indeed my redeemer. And this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. May we all say together, amen. Happy Resurrection Day. All right, it's just look a little odd not to be and have you all in fellowship with us uh, on this morning. But anyhow, we know that, uh, that Easter is not a holiday for us. You know, we celebrate the resurrection every first Sunday. And we celebrate the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The critical time that we're living in, one thing about it, every time you have a funeral, funeral is a reminder of your own mortality. And one of the things that's been sure that you got to have in your life is that now is not being much concerned about how many people are dying, but being more concerned about where you're going to go when you die. It's very important, man. I'll tell you what, man, to know that you're saved. And you're saved. You can say with the Apostle Paul, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is what? Is gain. Amen. Hebrews 9, 27 makes it perfectly clear that we don't know how we're going to come here. Amen. How are we going to leave here? We just got an appointment with death. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, what? The judgment is going to come. I'm here to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm here to celebrate the fact that I'm saved, and I know where I'm going. Amen. And I'm looking forward to whatever God has in store for me. Amen. Three things that every believer needs to have, because not only we're saved, but we ought to be, what? We ought to be secure about our salvation. Amen. Peter said you need to know that your election, what, is sure. So let me give you the three S's of eternal security. Amen. The one thing is that, 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 that Jesus says that we are secure. In John 10, if you go to the Bible, John 10, verse number 28 and verse number 29. In John 10, he says, I give unto you eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then verse 29, he said, my father, which gave me them, me, is greater than all. And no man is able, what, to pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus said, this is the security you're going to have. Number one, our security is in Christ, that we are in his hand. Guess what? And Christ is in the father's hand. So Christ's hand is in the father's hand, our hand in his hand. That give us double security. In order for the enemy to get us, he got to get us out of Jesus' hand. And he got to get Jesus out of God's hand. And by the time he do all of that, he'll wind up getting saved. And so, therefore, we are secure in that, in, that, in that region. Amen? Not only the Bible said we are secure, but we are sealed. Ephesians 4.30. In Ephesians 4, in verse number 30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Another word for seal in the Bible is where we get the word notarized, notary. A notary places their seal on something. And when they're sealed on something, that means the contents behind the seal is secure. The contents behind the seal cannot be changed. The contents behind the seal cannot be broken. You and I have not only been saved, but God has notarized us. He put his seal on us. Oh, my God. Amen. So, number one, I'm secure. Because no man could take me out of the Father, out of Jesus' hand. I am secure because the Holy Ghost have sealed me until the day of redemption. But here's the third thing. The third thing. I'm stable. Oh, my God. Jude one twenty four. And Jude 1 and verse number 24. Look what Jude said in Jude 1 and verse number 24. He says, not unto him who is able to keep us from what? Falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly what joy, amen. So, somebody say, I am secure. Oh my god, oh my god. One of the pictures of this is when the pictures of Noah remember, Noah was, 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 was on the, on, on the uh, ark, and it's amazing because the Bible told, tells us that God told Noah to come into the ark. The word come into the ark simply means that God was already in the ark. If God was outside the ark, he'd have told him to go into the ark. But God was in the ark, and he told him to come into the ark. So his security was not the ark himself. His security was God who was on the ark. And it's good to know that once he got in there, when the storms came... God shut the door and sealed him in there that even the storms of judgment could not even bother him. He could fall down in the ark, but he couldn't fall out of the ark because he is secure. That's what our salvation is to us. Amen? 
And so that's what I want to talk about today. I'm going to talk about how do you know that you're going to heaven? How do you know? And you should have want to know that you're going to heaven. Should have want to know. And there's no other better verse in the Bible than John 3.16. John 3.16 is the most famous verse in the Bible. I mean, anybody who's a halfway saved person that don't know John 3.16 is in trouble. I mean, you go to a football game, they'll put up John 3.16. You know, it's there. But how many of you really grab that, that, that verse, amen? Let me tell you what's so powerful about John 3.16. What's so powerful about it is that the gospel is put in that one sentence. The gospel is put in that one sentence. Now, let me give you two facts I want you to write, write down. I want you to, to keep about John 3.16. There are six major words in that passage. Six major words. God, only, son, perish, eternal, life. Those are the six major words in that passage. Now, if you look at the six major words in that passage, and you turn around and look at the capitals of each one of those words, you'll see that God is G. Only is O, Son is S, Perish is P, Eternal is E, and L is Life, and that spells Gospel. Oh my God. It spells Gospel. It spells Gospel. And, then, and what is the Gospel? What is the Gospel? It comes from an old English word. It actually means good news. So in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis, in the midst of a failing economy, in the midst of death all around us, in the midst of all the bad stuff we're hearing on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, uh, Channel 6, Channel 12, the, the, the Christian community is here to tell you that we got some good news. Oh my God, the good news is in the gospel, man. It's in the gospel. So the six major words in, in, the, in that passage you need to understand. Let me go a little deeper with you, amen. I'm going to look deeper with you. If you look at the word, at the sentence, there are 25 words in that sentence. The first 12 has to do with God. Four, one, God, two, so, three, love, four, the, five, world, six, that, seven, he, eight, gave, nine, his, ten, only 11 begotten 12. G, the son, is the 13th. So he's in the middle of that. There are 12 words after that. Count them. That. One. Whosoever. Two. Believe it. Three. In. Four. Him. Five. Should. Six. Not. Seven. Eight. Perish. Nine. But. Half. Ten. Everlasting, 11, life, 12. So you got 12 words in the beginning that tells us about God. And then you got 12 words in the end that tells us about man. But you got the son in the middle. That's the, that's, that's the good news. The good news is that the son came in the middle and hook the, the, the father and the man back together again. That's what you call the gospel. Oh my God. Wait a minute. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there in the text. It is right there. Amen. Let me give you four things that you need to learn today about John 3.16. As we break down. Four things you need to learn today about John 3.16. Here's the first thing. If you really want to know you saved, you got to recognize his love. Got to recognize his love. For God so loved the world. You got to recognize his love. Now listen, it's not that the fact that the father has love. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that the father is love. So it's not that the father has love for me. The Father himself is love. It's part of his nature. It's part of his character. 
It's part of his makeup. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? And so this is the thing that we need to understand about the father his love. There are three dimensions of the father's love that I want to show you. The first dimension of the father's love is that he shows us his love. That's amazing, man, because let me tell you something. Love is no good if love is not being shown. I mean, love is what love does. So the father shows us his love. How do you know that, preacher? First John 4, 9. In 1 John 4, 9, it says, in this was manifested. Manifested means shown. He showed us the love of God toward us. And how did he show us? Because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live, what? Through him. What is love? Love is meeting needs. It's meeting needs. Love said, tell me what you need. That I'm here to meet your needs. Another word for love is called fulfillment. When somebody loves you, they need to fulfill something in you that's missing. So love fulfilled needs. So what happened? We needed a savior. God showed us how much he loved us because God sent us a savior. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's what's celebrating every day. He showed his love for us when he sent Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he just sent a prophet. He just sent a good man. He just sent what? He sent himself. God came down himself and he what? Leaked into the womb of a virgin. Was born in Bethlehem of Judah. Walked the streets of Palestine. Died on a Friday. And then early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. God gave us his son. Amen. And the Bible said greater love that no man has than to lay down his life for his friends. Amen? So number one, God showed us his love. He showed it to us. Amen? He showed it to us. Here's number two. Here's number two. God wanted a spiritual family. God made Adam and Eve, and he played Adam and Eve. What happened? He dropped into the God, planted the garden, and they moved in with him. So Adam and Eve lived with God. Then they were supposed to reproduce. What are they supposed to reproduce? Reproduce people that will be part of his spiritual family. That's why Psalm 127 says what? The children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of his womb, our wombs, is his reward. It's because that's what God did. He wanted a spiritual family. And then sin came in. Satan came up and broke up the family. He broke up the family. But guess who stepped down through 42 generations? Jesus Christ. And what Jesus did, he took care of the sin that messed up the family. And because of Jesus Christ, you and I can be family again. First John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Thank God I'm back in the family. Oh my God, amen. Sin got me cut off, got me alienated. But because of Jesus Christ, I'm back in the family. John 1, 12. And John 1 and verse number 12, and the Bible said, for as many as received him, they become what? The sons, what? Of God. That's why you and I call each other brothers and sisters. Because we're part of the family. We're part of the body of Christ. Anybody know what I'm Every older woman is called a mother because she's part of the family. She's part of the body of Christ. Every older man we call a daddy because he's part of the family. He's part of the body of Christ because God wants a spiritual family. Is anybody other than me just glad to be in the family? There's some benefits when you're in the family. There's some blessings come when you're in the family. There's some healing will come because you're in the family. No weapon formed against me because I'm in the family. He's able to supply all of my needs because I'm in the family. Praise God today for Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He showed his love. He showed his love because he met our needs. He gave us his son. He not only he wanted a spiritual family. Amen. So now we were once sinners, but now we're sons. Now we're daughters. Now we're in the family of God. And if anybody asks you who I am, you tell them that I am a child of God. It doesn't just matter in my life, but I am a child of God. And one of these old days, 
I'm going home to be with the Lord. Amen. This is the, his, his thing, his thing, his thing, his thing, his thing. His third thing, his third thing about his love. I hope I'm not boring y'all. But here's the third thing about his love. It's not only he showed his love, not only the spirituality of his love, but the scope of his love. Ephesians 3, verse number 18. Watch this now. In Ephesians chapter 3, and let's go to verse number 18. Ephesians chapter 3, and go to verse number 18. He said what? You may be able to comprehend. He's talking about Christ. The word comprehend is to understand. All the saints need to understand what is the breadth and length and depth and height of God's love. The four dimensions of his love. Do you really understand it? Do you really understand? So what does it mean by the breadth of God's love? That's the width of God's love. You know what it means? It means that God's love is wide enough that you can get it everywhere. Oh man, you ain't got to just come to church to get God's love. Wherever you go, he still loves you. Wherever you do, he still loves you. When you was at the club, his love was still there. When you didn't have God on your mind, his love was still there. His love is so wide that you can't go anywhere and get outside of the love of God. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? That's why, let me tell you something. One of the celebrations that I do when it comes to God is not celebrating the fact that I'm saved. I'm still celebrating the fact of how God loved me when I wasn't saved. I'm still celebrating the fact that he loved me when I was in the club. He loved me when I had no God on my mind and no heaven in my view. He loved me when I was riding down the road drunk on one side of the road and he didn't let me kill my crazy self. He loved me. Somebody ought to praise God. He loved you. He loved you when you were acting a fool. He loved you when you were messing up. He loved you when everything, his love is wide enough to cover you wherever you are. That's the width, the breadth of God's love. Amen? And now he's talking about the length of God's love. The lift, man. How long is his love? How long is his love? His love is long enough to last forever. Oh, my God. Amen? It's long enough to last forever. Human love don't last forever. It don't last forever. That's why y'all had so many girlfriends and then had so many boyfriends. Amen? Because whatever love you have didn't last. That's why there's so many divorces. We have so many divorces because whatever love I have for you on the wedding day, it just did not last. But ain't it good to know that God's love is going to last forever? The fact that he loved me when I was born into this world. In fact, he made me to love me. He made me to love me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He saved me because he loved me. When nothing else would help, it was love that lifted me. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? His love covers a multitude of my sin. It's long enough it will last forever. Oh, my God. Oh, you you got to recognize. You better recognize. You can't get saved till you recognize his love. What's the depth of his love? The depth of his love is that it's deep enough to handle all of my problems. <laughs> his love is deep enough to handle all of my problems. You know, some people say, well, I can only go so far with you. I can only go so far with you. When the problems get too deep, I got I to leave you alone. I got to leave you alone. Isn't it good to know that God's love is deep enough to handle all of your problems? When other folk done wrote you off, when other folks said, I give you up, when other people said, I feed you with a long handled spoon, God said, I'm right here with you. His love is deep enough. I heard a hymn writer said, if you got to reach way down, Jesus would lift you right back up. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? That's why you call it amazing grace. Because you didn't know that his love was that deep. When you thought it was over. His love was deep. Just think about how many people who already wrote off the thief on the cross. They already said, I mean, he on his way to hell. But there was a savior in the middle. And the thief said, will you remember me? When you're coming to your kingdom, his love was deep enough that it's right there on the cross. He was dying himself, but he kept loving. He said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. His love was deep. He could handle every one of my problems. No matter what's going on in my life. When nobody else loves me, I know he loves me. 
when nobody else cares for me, I know he cares for me. In fact, I don't know why he loves me, and I don't know why he cares, but I'm telling you this, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that, I, that he did. What would I do if Jesus didn't love me? And what would I do if Jesus didn't care? But I'm here to tell you, I'm so glad that he did. The scope of his love. Oh, my God. It's wide enough to love me everywhere. It's long enough to last forever. It's deep enough to handle all of my problems. But here's the last one. It's high enough to overcome all my mistakes. Oh, my God. Amen. Isn't it good to know? Isn't it good to know that you got a God sent want to give you one more chance? Yeah, but God just want to give you one more chance. His love is so high enough, it can handle all of your mistakes. It can handle all of your mistakes. Amen? It can handle all of your mistakes. It's a God that said, you know, people say he's a God of a second chance. No, he's a God of another chance. Because I've been, I've been wasting second chances a long time ago. But isn't it good to know that God never writes you off? Let me tell you something. God is not mad at you. God is mad about you. Oh, my God. Amen. He forgives my past. He forgives my mistakes. He forgives my foolishness. The fact that you got up this morning. God said, I gave you another chance. Somebody ought to thank God that he gave you another chance. All that could have killed you yesterday, God wiped it all away and gave you another chance. The Bible said his mercies are new every day. Better recognize his love. Better recognize his love. Better recognize, man, you can't get saved until you recognize his love. For God so loved the world, his extravagant love of God. Amen. He showed it. He wants us to be a part of his spiritual family. And then he showed us the scope of his love. Is anybody other than me just want to praise God? Praise God for love so wide that he loved me everywhere. Even when I was in the club getting my groove on, he was right there loving me. He know how to love me everywhere. It's so long. That his love lasts forever. It is so deep that it can handle all of my problems. And it is so high that it can cover all of my mistakes. Thank God today for his love. Number one, you got to recognize his love. You got to recognize his love. Here's number two. Number two, you got to receive his gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, when somebody give you something that's called a gift <laughs> he didn't say you earned his son he said I gave you my son amen Romans 3 24 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus 25 25, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation. And the word perpetuation means to be a satisfaction. God was satisfied what Jesus did on Calvary through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. What a gift. God wiped out my past. If any man that be in Christ Jesus... He is a new creation. The old things are past. And what do you do with stuff when it's past? You bury it. And why do you bury it? Because you don't want to see it again. Anything that you bury, you don't want to see it ever again. I love my, my mother, my adopted mother, my foster mother. I love her dearly. But we buried her. In 1979, I don't want to see her on this side again. Amen? So why can't you bury your past? Because God says, I've already buried it. And only the demons in hell will try to resurrect something that God has buried. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
is the thing that he did. Now, here's the thing. We know that God is a God of love. We recognize the fact that he's love, but you also got to recognize the fact that he is a just God. And what do you mean by a just God? It means that, that, that God, if you break the law, you got to pay. <laughs> See, there's a penalty when laws are broken. Because laws are given to people that don't know how to love. Because people who knew how to love don't need a law. So if I got to give you a law, it's because you're deficient in your love. So God said, if you just love me right, I wouldn't have to give you a law. See, if I got a woman, my wife loves me right, I don't have to give her a law. A law is a rule that you give to people that don't know how to love. So now there's a penalty for breaking the law. I mean, you drive down uh, I-520 I and you drive 80 miles an hour in a 55 zone and the cops see you, what's going to happen? He's going to pull you over. What are you going to do? He's going to give you a ticket. What is the ticket? The ticket is the penalty. So what is sin? Sin is when we broke the law. So now, 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 now people said, no, I, I, don't, I don't remember doing anything wrong. Really? You're not a sinner because you did something wrong. You are a sinner because you came from a sinner. Your mama a sinner. Your daddy a sinner. And two sinners had nothing but a sinner. I, I wish I had somebody. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, you don't, you're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you already a sinner. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Romans 3.23. The Bible said, for all have sinned. Now, all don't mean y'all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of who? God. Hmm. Now, because all have sinned and God is the God of love, but God is the just God, there has to be a penalty. Somebody, it's got to be a penalty. Go to Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. Oh my God, amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So therefore, somebody had to pay for that sin. So God gave us a gift to help pay for our sin. Hmm. Flip back to Romans 3.24. Romans 3.24. Let's read the Bible. These two words here are something you need to understand. Being justified and redeemed. I'm justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What is justified? Justified simply is to be declared righteous. Let me just give you a, a practical term of it. You are justified because God looked at you just as you had never sinned. Justified is just as I had never sinned. That's the way God looks at me. Amen? And what is redemption? Redemption is a slave term. It's mean to buy the freedom of somebody else. So Jesus went to Calvary. And what he did? He paid the penalty and bought the freedom for you and I. And who the Son set free is free. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 2 Corinthians 5.21. And 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you know what that gift is called? It's called grace. It's called grace. Grace ain't nothing but a gift that you and I get because of Jesus Christ. So thank God for his grace. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, 
and not of yourselves, for it is the gift of God. So now, you want to know how you want to be saved? You got to recognize his love. For God so loved the world. And then you got to be willing to receive his gift. For he gave his only begotten son. Here's number three. Here's number three. You got to respond to his offer. <laughs> that whosoever believeth in him. Oh my God. The whosoever believeth in him. You know, you know it, it's good to know. It's good to know that Jesus is an equal opportunity savior. Oh my God. Amen. He does not discriminate. Oh my God. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, rich, poor. It doesn't matter where you come from, what your past been, what your which ways have been. The Bible says you're just a whosoever. I don't know about it, I'm Jew, but I'm glad I'm a whosoever. I'm just one of those whosoevers, amen. You, you can try to put me in hell if you want to, but you can't get me in hell because I'm qualified to go to heaven. All you got to be is a whosoever. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Somebody ought to thank God. That God didn't put you in a wrong category. He said, whosoever. Second Peter 3 9. In Second Peter chapter 3 9, the Bible said, The Lord is not slight concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering to us, Ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You and I are whosoever's. Oh my God. Amen. Equal opportunity savior. That's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus is. I know that boy bad. I know he gets on your last nerve. But don't you forget about it. He's still a whosoever. I know that child don't look like he going to turn around. But every day he breathes, he's still a whosoever. And God know how to reach way down and pull us right back up. Amen? It's a good thing about it. He's whosoever, 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 whosoever. Watch this. Thing. Now, here's the response. Here's the response. Not that you are whosoever. Whosoever believeth on him. Now, you got to understand, the word he's talking about believing, he's talking about trusting. Trusting. Now, the word trust in the Bible means to comply. It means to comply. It means to rely on. It means to commit to. So it's not enough for a person to uh, believe by recognizing his love, receive the gift that God has given us. You have to be willing to trust it. Now, there is a difference between your head and your heart. A whole lot of us got God in our head, but he just ain't reached our heart. Because your heart determines what you do. Your head only determines how you think. So God is saying, you cannot get to heaven based on how you think. It's going to have to be based on what you do with your heart. Because your heart determines what you do. The Bible said out of your heart come the issues of your life. If you steal, you know why you steal? Because stealing is in your heart. Because if it wasn't in your heart, you wouldn't do it. That's why when somebody gets mad with you and cuss you out, they just trying to let you know that was that's really was in my heart about you. Amen. Because if it wasn't in there, it wouldn't come out. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? And people said, you know, I didn't mean that what I said that. I didn't mean that what I said that. No, 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 no. You didn't mean for me to know it. Because if it wasn't in there, 
it'll never come out of there. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Jeremiah said, who in the world can know the heart? Because the heart is so deceitful. The heart will deceive you. It will always deceive you. So you got to understand, when it comes to God, your salvation is based on 18 inches. 18 inches. That's the distance between your head and your heart. And many of you are going to hell because of 18 inches. You got God in your head, but he's not in your heart. Amen? Because you're not trusting him. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. That's why you, you want to know whether you're saved or not. Who are you relying on in the things you're doing? In the house that you're living in right there, who did you rely on in getting that house? In the person you married, who do you rely on in choosing that individual? It's the difference between your head and your heart. And so God is saying, yeah, but even the devils believe me and they tremble. It's in their head, but I'm not in their heart. Hmm. Let me just say this thing. The difference between religion and salvation, because a lot of you are religious. Religious people are people who are trying to attempt to get to God on their own terms. People who are really saved are concerned about the relationship they have with God through Jesus Christ. So therefore, I'm not here trying to do things to try to get my way to heaven. I'm here to celebrate the relationship I have with him because of Jesus Christ. So everything I do is because of the relationship that I have with him. In all my ways, I acknowledge him and let him give direction. And what you get from me is a reflection of my relationship that I have with him. Religion said, this is what you got to do. Saved people said, this is what already been done. And that's the difference, man. That is the difference, man. That is the difference. All right, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Getting ready to wrap this up. How many of you have been enjoying this so far? How many wrap this up? Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. In order for me to know that I'm saved, number one, I've got to be willing to recognize his love. His great love for me. Amen. His great love for me. I got to be able to recognize it. Amen. Because he showed it. He made me a part of his family. And that love is so high. Oh, my God. It can overcome all of my mistakes. It's so low that it can handle all of my problems. It's so long, it'll last forever. It's so wide because it followed me everywhere. Oh, my God. Amen. And then on, on the third thing about it is good that now that I that's all I need to do is respond to his love. When you respond to his love, it's not only saying that, our Lord, I believe you in my head, but I'm trusting you with my life. I'm trusting you with my finances. I'm trusting you with this crisis. I'm trusting you with whatever. The, Pastor, why are you preaching today from the pulpit? Because I trust him. I'm trusting him. That's what I'm doing. I'm relying upon him in every aspect of my life. I'm not depressed. I'm not freaked out. I'm just trusting him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here's the fourth thing, and I'll get ready to close on today. You got to rely on this promise. If you want to be saved, recognize his love. Receive his gift. Amen. Respond to his offer. And then rely on his promise. The Bible said he shall have everlasting life. That means you're going to have a life that's lasting forever. Let me tell you something. We were made to live forever. We were made as an image. We were made in this likeness of God. We were made to live forever. You know, only sin brought death. It brought death. It brought death to three dimensions. Number one, it brought spiritual death immediately. It brought physical death progressively. Because of sin, death is a process. We are progressing toward death every day. Every day. Amen? Every day. That's why we got to take vitamins and supplements because the body is dying. So you're trying to put back what the body don't produce no more. Because death is progressive. Skin wrinkling up. Hair done change colors. Even your wig done change colors. Because death is progressive. 
It is progressive. Amen? And then you're going to die one day eternally. And that death is going to be an eternal separation from God. So therefore, sin cut out my forever. It cut out my living with God forever. But Jesus Christ came and took care of my sin and restored my forever. And God has promised it by saying, you shall have everlasting life. <laughs> that means you're going to live with God forever. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amen. Oh, my God. Because of Jesus Christ, he restored the promise of God in my life. Because of Jesus Christ, he gave me my purpose for living in this world. Because of Jesus Christ, he fixed it where I can live permanently with God in heaven. Last scripture, 1 Peter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. I got my reservations. I got my ticket in my hand. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Because it's already been reserved for me in heaven. In a time like this. You're going to need a savior. And you're going to need an anchor. And you need to be sure and very sure that that anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Because life is too short. Death is too sure. Eternity is too long. Judgment is too dreadful. And hell is too hot for you to mess around here and lose your soul. And to give your life to Jesus Christ and you can be sure that you're going to heaven when you die recognize his love receive his gift respond to his offer and you can rely on his promise give God praise and glory The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the hallmark of our faith. Amen. We're going to conclude our broadcast on today because we're going to be talking about this crisis and we know that we're in a crisis. The United States now has superseded all of the nations in the world in death when it comes to this crisis. Amen. And let me just tell you something about this. It's very, very important. It's more important that the light of the church needs to shine be even brighter than ever. And I want to thank all of you for supporting this broadcast, supporting what we're doing. Continue to support your church. You know, even though you're out of the fellowship, you're not out of the church. You're still a disciple of the church. Amen? Amen. And those who are choosing to support this ministry, to do two things, to sustain it and to help us to supply ministry as it is needed. Amen? And we want to continue to do that because... In the fact that this particular crisis is a problem, you didn't even begin to create the problems that's going to come. On this Tuesday at 1030, I'm going to be talking about how to insulate yourself in a crisis. How do you insulate yourself in a crisis? I mean, how do you be in this world but not be of this world? And we're going to show you how you insulate yourself in a crisis. This is 1030 Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 1030. We'll be back here screaming, and we want you to get this message because I believe in my heart 
that it's going to change our lives. Amen? And so this one, Tuesday, we're going to be looking for you to do that. Again, if you want to support this ministry, you can always do it by going to our website, greatyoungzion.org, and uh, you can just click donation, and we'd be more than happy to receive your gift. Support this ministry, you can go to our Give Plus app, amen? If you're not familiar with that, you can call our office. We'll be happy to help you with that. Or you can mail your gift, P.O. Box 1864. Right here in the city of Augusta, 30903. Or if you're in Augusta, you can just drive through. I drive through here at the church at the office side, and there's an office drop box. You can drop your gift uh, there as well. Amen. If you want to send your gift by somebody, go ahead and send it. We'd be more than happy to receive your gift. I want to thank all of you for what you are giving. For those of us who are supporting the ministry, we want to thank you so much for that. We lift up prayers today again for our medical community. For those who are risking their lives uh, to care for, for those who are sick and those who are dying, we want to lift them up on today. We want to lift up our, only our medical people. We lift up our, 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 our political leaders. We will lift up those who, who uh, that God would give them the wisdom to lead us nationally and statewide and localwise. We want to ask God to continue to touch and move in their lives. We want to ask God to bless this, this church that we continue to stand on a wall and preach the word of God and to be able to be a prophetic voice in the times that we're living in in this day. Amen. As we close the day, will you lift up and have prayer with me right now? God, we want to thank you so much on today. We want to thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. On this Resurrection Emphasis Day, we thank you for Jesus Christ, for our being our Lord and our Savior. We ask, oh God, that you will continue to walk with us, continue to be with us as you promised you would in your word. We pray for the families of those who've lost the battle to this crisis. We pray for all of our sick and all of our shut in. We pray for those who are struggling, no matter what their struggles could be. We pray especially for our nursing homes and for our elderly and for those who are really being afflicted with this virus. We ask, oh God, that you will continue to heal this land not only heal us physically, but also, Lord, heal our souls, our hearts, and bring us to a closer awareness of you. Thank you, God, for what you've done on this day. For we give you the glory and the honor. It all belongs to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. amen. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Enjoy Resurrection Sunday.